What is up everybody, Escape211 here. We are getting into some best mech loadouts. This is the perfect time to get into it because we have the grade update and the gear hub that is going to guide us for efficiency in a given mech. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick a mech, look at it on its tier and the tiers that it's effective in, the different kind of rank ups that are good for it and all the builds that make sense for that mech in those tiers, all right? So by way of example, we're gonna focus on Puma here first. Puma is a mech that you get on tier two. So we'll look at tier two at its natural two star rating, and then look at the different builds that work for it on that tier, and then the tier up into tier three. And then we'll also look at ranking it up once so it's three stars, because at 16 energy, it's actually pretty decent too. So we're mostly gonna focus on there. Now, obviously you could do more upgrading, but this is the area that we find Puma generally the most effective in. So with that all in mind, here we go. When we first get Puma, he starts at 12 energy. So we're gonna focus on the 12 energy two star builds for it. And then the 16 energy ones when you go up to three star. Now, if I didn't really explain this before, I'm gonna focus on the natural star builds in a given tier for the mech. Uh, and then whatever makes sense to upgrade it. In this case, just three stars. So the 12 and 16 energy builds for Puma will be focused on in tier two and tier three. And uh, I'm, I'm generally gonna be focusing on the stuff that is reasonable for everyone to get for natural progression. I don't necessarily wanna focus on the stuff that people buy or crazy legendaries that you have to save up for forever. Mostly the most reasonable stuff, all right? So the first one to focus on is going to be, I would consider the most bread and butter basic build, and that is the RPG-6. Puma, when he is is at 12 energy and you first get him, the RPG-6 is a great one to get for him and use just because it's very flexible, it's good on all maps, it allows you to do, you know, corner shooting, uh, peak shooting, and uh, more controlled, like consistent fire when you use your shield. So it's very flexible for all different styles of combat and very good overall to get comfortable with Puma at this time. Now, of course, you're using a common weapon at one star or so. It's gonna lag behind a little bit later on, but it's great to start with and get your feet wet overall. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is the overall pilot feel. Obviously, with this one, we're just gonna focus on the rare pilots uh, overall because Puma is very early in the game, but I do want to focus on the certain pilots and implants that are going to make sense for each player to get around these times. And for this one, obviously, Samson as the missile pilot is going to make a lot of sense here. Uh, and then just the basic damage and the radius are a solid one to get. Both of these are not exactly necessary, but both of them are very useful for this weapon. They're not really going to do anything super insane, but getting them is absolutely going to benefit you in various ways. So if you're able to pick this up from the store or if you're lucky to get it from a crate, it's definitely Definitely worth upgrading a little bit, couple, couple, uh, you know, levels, um, just to get some benefit out of it while you're using this weapon set. Next up at two stars, we got the Thermal Lance 6. This one, I would say, is easiest to pilot. Probably the easiest in the beginning, uh, easier than the RPG-6, but it is one that doesn't do as much damage. It's generally a support class weapon. The ultimate goal with this weapon is really to just paint a target, get them into overheat, and then let your team know that this one is a good target to kill, just because your team should hopefully be bringing the heavier guns to kill a lot of targets. Now, of course, when stuff gets weak, you will be able to take it out, and having all that range is super Super beneficial um, but it is not something that's going to be too easy for you to do uh, ultimately you want to play with your range as your biggest benefit and then use your shield to poke out when you need to put a lot of overheat on stuff or if you plan to overheat a bunch of stuff or kill something if you can do it quickly enough um, the shield is definitely going to be the, the way to help you here um, obviously the idea here too is to play with teammates real players uh, and that's going to benefit you the most but even when you play with AI you can still paint targets uh, uh, usually the ones that are closest to them just so that they kill it pretty quickly it's it's still pretty effective there just not as effective i would say as far as implants go of course you're going to want to use the um, beam based pilot uh, and then for the implants, I will say the damage one here is not super important. It's not bad, but the reload one is very helpful just because this weapon uh, has a natural reload and it'll just help you reload faster as it just reloads over time. So that's probably the more beneficial one for you to get. You just want ammo in the chamber to be able to hit overheat on targets. So definitely the implant to prioritize out of these early ones for this weapon. 
Next up, we have the Plasma Cannon 6. And if you know me, you know I am not a big fan of this weapon. But super early in the game, there are not a whole lot of other uncommon weapons that output decent damage like this does. And you also, again, don't have a whole lot of things at 12 energy. So Puma does make sense to run this weapon with if you want something that's a little more damaging. You do have to get closer to your target, so you're pretty much in brawling range. And again, tanks are going to do better at this later on. But this early, Puma can do it. You definitely have to pick different times to uh, engage your targets when you have your shield uh, when you have other targets that they can prioritize so that you can third party them that kind of stuff because again you are very squishy and you're not really going to be able to dance with most other mechs so you do have to play your encounters right but if you can find those windows you can deal really solid damage against targets this early in the game with a weapon set like this. As far as implants go, uh, yeah, obviously you want to use the assault class stuff and then the damage and the reload for this. The damage is probably going to be the more important one here. Reload is helpful, but this does already reload pretty quickly and uptime is usually not a major concern because you're going to have to pick your windows. So the reload isn't super important. It would be more important if you were like brawling as a tank, but here it's not like the biggest thing. So out of the two, I would prioritize damage personally. All right, this next one is a little dicey. It's a very high risk, high reward type of build. And this is the Shotgun 8-4 build on Puma at two stars. Now, you don't really have anything, again, that's gonna be able to touch running the Shotgun 8 unless you run it solo. So being able to run something at this kind of damage uh, at this early is really nice. But like I said, very risky. You gotta get really close. And again, because Puma is very squishy, that can be really bad. But if you play this early in the game, you know that the AI runs the dual Shotgun 8 at 16 energy. I don't really recommend this, but if they sneak up on you, oh boy, they can kill you really quickly. So there are benefits to running this. It's just very difficult to do so it's one you have to use at your own discretion uh, definitely good and useful at certain maps like if you're doing 2v2 or smaller indoor maps it can be very effective there if you know the map well and can position yourself good um, obviously if you can get times where you can hit multiple targets very very useful but uh, overall a very interesting and uh, tricky build to run but can be very effective if you land it well as far as pilots go, you're going to want to use your close up pilot. And for this one, the range, I would say, is more imperative than the damage. Both are really good to get. Very, very useful. Damage is always good. But the range for this lets you go beyond 30 meters, which is super limiting. So uh, that would be the most important one, in my opinion, to get if you plan to run this weapon really at all. But for this set, especially. Now, if we go into three stars when we are on tier two, one of the builds that makes the most sense here would be the dual long arm eight. This one is a very powerful sniper build. A lot of people at this point, or maybe a little bit as you get into tier three, have arachnos, and a lot of people put that on there, but it can also be very effective on Puma, especially with that shield, to be able to put it up, use it when you need to for taking your shots, and then while you're waiting for your next rounds, you can, uh, you know, get behind cover, be safe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely one that is very effective at the long range but that's really all it's good at anything close up it's going to struggle with all right so uh if you've used long arms before you know this already um and it's definitely one because it has uh no aim assist you definitely have to get good at shooting with it uh if you haven't used this weapon it definitely will take a little bit of getting used to but it can be very powerful in that sniper role and great for certain maps that have a lot of like open long range area very very effective there as far as implants go early on, really just the damage is the most useful. You can also get the range one, but this already has very good range out of the box. It's not required. It could be helpful, um, but it also could be bad if it messes with your minimum range, which it does for some people. So you may not even want to use that one, but the damage one is certainly a solid one to pick. All right, now we're gonna move over to tier three and we are gonna talk about the two-star builds for Puma. And one of the first ones out of the gate would be the Pulse Cannon 6, all right? Now, this is not necessarily the most ideal for Puma, but when you first get into this tier and get the Pulse Cannon 6 because it's a cheap weapon, it can be a decent pairing with Puma to do more long range uh, sustained fire, especially when you are able to use your shield or third party opponents. The longer you run this on this uh, tier though, the more it will struggle just because Puma is pretty squishy. And as you start to see beefier mechs like Ares, this is not really gonna punch through them fast enough and Puma with his squishy body is not going to to stand around long enough to be able to deal with it. So it's one that you can get early on and use, but I wouldn't recommend using it for too long. Um, probably better to switch to something with more punch or more burst damage overall for Puma and put the Pulse Cannon 6s on something else. All right. 
Uh, as far as implants go, this is the, the standard kind of implants that you use. Both of them are pretty effective. The idea of both your damage uh, and your mag are not bad. I would say damage is more favorable. Usually is a pretty solid standby to go with. Uh, the mag in this one is helpful just for when you need to sustain longer, but the reload on this isn't too bad. Uh, and the actual size of the mag is pretty solid too. So the mag uh, implant, I would say, is less important than the damage one just to help get your DPS higher overall. Next up, we have the Javelin 6s for Puma. And this one is pretty comfortable for Puma at this stage. Again, just because Puma is pretty darn squishy, this is one where you can lower your level of exposure while still putting out some decent damage. Again, the Javs, when you first get them, will probably put out some decent damage like they are in the footage I'm showing here. But if you uh, linger too long in tier three or you start to get harder opponents, the damage may feel a little more lackluster, uh, especially Especially if you were to push into the next tier or closer to the next tier um, depending on the kind of opponents you get but again with Puma the way he is squishy this is a nice way to utilize Puma when you're in tier 3 just because it lowers his exposure and you can even if you need to scout for yourself use your shield to just pop out get eyes on something and shoot it uh, and still keep yourself pretty healthy and uh, secure with your shield that's out there so pretty good overall all right, so with the implants, I would say damage, again, is probably more favorable just because this will start to feel like it has a little bit less damage the further on you go with it. But the reload is actually quite helpful here too, just because since these are burst weapons, there's a lot of sitting around each time you're waiting for your weapons to come back. So uh, both are very good implants to look for and use this early on. Obviously, there are better implants you can get later, but these are the early ones that you have. Both are pretty good though. Now we have probably one of my favorites for Puma in tier three, and that would be the Missile Rack 6. This is something that has a lot of punch, a lot of burst, and one that can keep your exposure pretty low. But even if you do need to expose yourself a little, you got your shield. So it works really well with Puma. Uh, I like to actually fire singles, especially when I first start in this tier, because you usually can kill stuff if you line up your shots well with one salvo. But if you need to use both, you can usually handle that really well and then get back to safety while you reload. So very, very effective build overall, I think, in the, in the hands of Puma here. Uh, and a nice one, uh, especially to allow some other weapons to shine on other mechs in this tier. So very effective overall. Uh, I do think that when it comes to implants, the damage once again is probably the more important one, um, arguably, uh, just because it probably depends on where you are in the tier, what kind of enemies you're facing. If the enemies still feel like they are easy enough to kill with one salvo possibly, then you may not need the damage more than the reload. The reload is pretty important because yeah, again, this is burst fire. So you do need to be aware of your reload and try to manage that well. Um, so yeah, reload may be more important than damage for you, but it probably depends on the player and again what you're facing overall though uh generally speaking these are the decent decent implants that you get early on both are pretty effective so uh worth getting both if you can utilize them Now you're going to move over to the three star builds that you can find in tier three. And there's really only a couple of them that are okay, typically for Puma. And the first would be the Pulse Cannon 8. Again, this is not necessarily super effective just because the Pulse Cannon is a sustained weapon. So again, tricky with Puma, but because you don't really have a whole lot of 16 energy options this early in the game, and because there's not really great ones that are better, uh, unless you're going to start spending, Puma is a pretty solid option here. And because it's uh, an eight, energy or 16 energy type of build it can actually output decent damage this early in the game so it's not terrible on puma and the exposure isn't the worst but it's not necessarily what i would say is super great it's it's definitely one that you know works well puts in good work but is not amazing you definitely want to keep the range fire like you would with the pulse cannon six uh but you're just going to be doing that um with just more damage overall so try to keep the range utilize your shield try to third party enemies very effective uh in that kind of space but beyond that you don't really want to be brawling you don't want to get in anybody's face you don't want to do anything too crazy so try to be aware of that so you don't just think that now that you have 16 energy you can crush stuff it's still going to be your body is still very squishy all right so you got to be aware of that kind of stuff um the uh the overall 
idea with implants here is the same as the Pulse Cannon 6. Again, the damage is going to be more important. The mag is helpful, but not as important as the damage. So you want to keep that kind of stuff in mind when you're thinking about using this, this weapon in the same way. Uh, yeah, so implants just running about the same as the 6. Last up in tier three at three star, we have the Rocket Mortar 8 on Puma. And this one works for Puma, again, similar to because the Jav 6, this has low exposure and can output some decent damage because you now have 16 energy, it has more damage potential. But the difficulty with this weapon, Rocket Mortar 8 in general, is uh, twofold, in my opinion, this early on in the game. For one, this one only has a small amount of warheads. So there's just less coverage that it has, harder to hit your targets. You just wanna be as close as you can to even hit something or maybe get them all clumped up so that you can get some decent shots on some enemies but yeah not easy to hit your targets the other issue related to that is the implants early on the only implants you have are the damage one and the range one that just gives you a little bit more effective minimum range but it's not going to give you a whole lot the damage one clearly here is better but the real implants that are beneficial are the radius ones the epic and the legendary one you can get those in the shop but they're eight coins and you know sometimes not really worth people getting this early in the game so it's definitely a use at your discretion if you get a good uh, radius implant good one to get otherwise you may want to hold off on this one overall for puma and there we have it guys that is puma and the general best loadouts for him given his place on the gear hub now obviously there are going to be other loadouts that you could do if you use him longer or there are other builds like later on that you still could use a little bit going even into tier four maybe like Misarak 8 or javelin 8 but when you start getting into those areas there's usually better mechs that have similar uh energy or higher energy that are going to do a lot better than puma as an uncommon so that is generally the area that we find him the most effective in and and probably where you will find his best loadouts but if there are some other ones that you think i missed some that you like feel free to comment below and we will see you out there on the battlefield